problem you have here. So we have a right triangle and notice our reference angle is 52 degrees. So it's not a special right triangle and that's what, why we're going to use trig with this one. Okay, so I've got the steps over here on the right side for you. Okay, the first step is we're going to find the reference angle. Then we're going to label our opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse based on that reference angle. Then we're going to decide which trig function we're going to use when we're going to set it up. So the first part I'm going to show you is just how to do these four steps. Then on the second page, we're going to go through actually solving those. Okay, so let's look at this setup. We want to use this 52 degree angle as our reference angle. So from this 52 degree angle, this side is the opposite. This side is the hypotenuse. So that means the side that's labeled 12 is my adjacent side. Okay, so which two sides are we using? Well, there's no, no marking, there's no length, and our X is not on the hypotenuse. So we're not going to use hypotenuse. We're going to use the opposite side and the adjacent side. So go back and look at your reference. Which trig ratio, I'll jot them up here, opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. Which one uses the opposite side and the adjacent side? Well, that's our tangent. So that's how we decide which trig function to use. So let's set up the tangent of theta. Well, theta in this case is our reference angle. So we're taking the tangent of 52 degrees. And that's equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So now we're going to write a ratio. Opposite is x. We don't know that side. Adjacent is 12. And that is how we set it up. So there's our first, there's the first part. So let's go down and we're just going to practice setting these first three problems up. Not solving them yet, just setting them up. So I'm going to jot this down for later. We have the tangent of 52 is equal to 12 over x. Okay, so now let's look at this practice problem here. So here's our right triangle. We have a 48 degree angle here. So that's our reference angle. We've got 17 on this side and X on this side. So from this reference angle, which two sides are we dealing with? These two. So from here, this side X is the opposite. And the side that's marked 17 is the hypotenuse. Okay, so we had sine, cosine. Let me jot those down again. I'll try not to erase them this time. And which trig function uses the opposite and the hypotenuse? Well, that's the sine function, okay? Because it's sine is opposite and hypotenuse. So I'm going to set up the sine of what angle? What's my reference angle? It is 48 degrees. And that's equal to the opposite. So my opposite is my unknown. So it's on top and my hypotenuse is on the bottom and the hypotenuse is 17. So the first problem is going to be the sine of 48 is equal to x over 17. Okay, let's try the third one or the second practice problem on your second page. Let's see. We have a 72 degree reference angle. We've got 34 over here we have x over here. So from the 72 degree angle, x is our opposite. This is our hypotenuse. And this one is our adjacent. Okay, so we're not using hypotenuse. So which one uses opposite and adjacent? Opposite adjacent is tangent. Opposite and adjacent. So let's see if you can do this. We're going to set up the tangent of what angle? Tangent of 72 is equal to the ratio of which two sides? Opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to have x over 34. So this one sends, sets up as the tangent of 72 is equal to x over 34. Okay, let's look at the third one. Okay, the third one. We have an x here, 
we have a 7 here, and we have a 25 as our reference angle. Okay, so from the reference angle, which one's opposite? This one's opposite. This one is hypotenuse, and this one is adjacent. Okay, which side are we not using? We're not using the opposite, so we know it's not the sine. Okay, we also know it's not the tangent because we don't have the opposite, so the only one left would be cosine, which is adjacent hypotenuse. So, yep, we're going to use the cosine. So, let's set it up the cosine of 25, that's always the reference angle, is equal to the adjacent, which is 7. So, this time we have a 7 on top and the hypotenuse, which is x on the bottom. Okay, so when we go to solve these in just a minute, this one is a little trickier because the variable is in the bottom, in the denominator. Okay, so that's how you're going to set those up. Now I'm going to show you how to solve these. Okay, so we'll solve one at a time. Let's go back and look at the very first problem. And let's, let me show you how to actually solve this one. The first one we, I had was the tangent of 52 degrees is equal to x over 12. Now, part 3, which is on the second page back here, it goes through all the steps. So you're going to set up the ratio as the trig function over 1 is equal to the ratio of the two sides. Step 2 is going to be a cross multiplying. But before we cross multiply, we actually have to change the trig function to a decimal. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then once we set up that, we're going to cross multiply and solve that, that proportion. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is stick the trig function over 1, okay, so that we actually have a proportion. Then you're going to grab your calculator and you're going to put in in this case, the tangent, so you're using these three trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent. I'm going to take the tangent of 52 degrees, and I get some fancy decimal. Um, now, I just noticed that my calculator is actually in radians instead of degrees. So make sure your calculator is in degrees and not radians. So let's go back. I'm going to go back and re-enter that. I knew that sounded too big. So let's try that again. So check your mode. Make sure your calculator is in degrees or if you have a TI-30, it should say DEG in the bottom of your screen. Okay, so now I'm going to take the tangent of 52 and enter or equal. Okay, that sounds better. And I've got 1.2799. And you want to take four decimal places, four. So I'm going to write that 1.2799. And the reason you take four decimal places is because you want it to be very accurate. So that's why it's four decimal places. Okay, so all I've done is put the tangent of 52 into the calculator. That's all I've done. Okay, now once I do that, I now have the decimal version of the tangent of 52, and now I can do a cross product. So I'm going to multiply x times 1, which is x, and 12 times 1.2799. So I'm just using my calculator and multiplying that out and I get 15.36. Now, I can actually just round this to one or two decimal places, whatever the problem's asking for. This is in hundredths. If you needed tenths, it would be 15.4. So that is the value of x. So in the original problem, if you go back, what were we solving for? We were solving this original problem for this other leg. So that means this leg would be 15.36, which sounds approximately right because if one leg is 12, the other leg would be a little bit longer because it's 52 degrees. That's a larger angle than this one up here. So that sounds appropriate. So that's how you would work the trig function. Now let's try your practice problems, okay? Let's try the one, your practice number one, which it ended up being the sine of 48 is equal to x over 17. Okay, so what do we do first? We take our handy dandy calculator and we put in the sine of 48 degrees. 
and this time we get we don't have a whole number it's just 0 0.7431 so 0 0.7431 over 1 so you're always going to stick a 1 underneath that trig ratio is equal to x over 17 and again we're going to do a cross product so x times 1 is just 1x or x and then we're going to take 17 times that decimal and I end up with 12.63 so let's see if that sounds reasonable okay remember we were given on this one the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse is 17 the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest side so that makes sense that this would be 12.63 so that's reasonable that's a reasonable answer okay let's try the next one we set this one up as the tangent of 72 is equal to x over 34 so you should be getting pretty good at these what do we do first first step take your calculator tangent of 72 and let's evaluate 3.077 and then that 6 is going to round up to a 7 so let's call it 3.0777 3.0777 all over 1 is equal to x over 34 now a cross product x equals times 34 and I'm getting 104.6 104.64 now let's see if that one sounds reasonable okay we were given this leg is 34 72 that's a big angle so that side's going to be quite a bit bigger ends up being a hundred and four boy that's a big side but that's reasonable okay so that's how you're going to work that one now I'm going to show you the one that's a little harder that's practice problem three and the reason it's harder is because the variable is in the denominator so let's work through this last one. I'll show you how to work it. So we have the cosine of 25 degrees is equal to 7 over x. Okay, first step is exactly the same. Let's just set up our cosine of 70 or 25. Okay, our cosine of 25 is 0 0.96, 0 0.9063. Zero nine zero six three all over the value one is equal to x over or seven over x now this is where it gets trickier when you go to do the cross product okay when you do the cross multiplying seven times one is seven so you can see that we're we don't have the variable on top the variables on bottom so now we're going to have point nine zero six three as our coefficient to the x so now we're going to cross multiply that way and get 0.9063x. Okay, so just treat that like any other coefficient. To get the x by itself, you would then divide by that nasty decimal, 0.9063. So take your handy dandy calculator, 7 divided by 0.9063. And I get 7.72. 7 7.72 is equal to x. Okay, let's see if that sounds reasonable. Practice problem three, let's see. We have 25 here, which is a small angle. This side is seven, so the hypotenuse is longer. Not a lot longer, but a little bit longer than this side. And the reason it's only a little bit longer is because this side over here would be very small if it was drawn to scale. So that's how you solve those, okay? So we've gone back and solved all the problems by setting this up. Trig function over 1 is equal to side over side. Please ignore my 2. You shouldn't have that on yours. I fixed the worksheet. And then you're going to take your trig function, your angle, and then enter or equal to find the actual value as a decimal place. And remember, you want four decimal places. So write that down, you want four decimal places because you want your answer to be very accurate. Okay, so what have we got left? 
the last thing we've got on the worksheet or the notes taking guide today is for you to work through a couple practice problems uh, on your own. So you're going to go through all the steps. You're going to look at your reference angle. Decide which two sides you have. Decide which trig function you're going to use. Set it up and solve. And I'll just give you a hint. Both of these are different trig functions. Okay? They're not the same. Um, good luck and check your answers in the course.